Okay, so today I'm going to be showing you how I'm going to make a Phase 2 ARC Clone Trooper in a Revenge of the Sith style helmet. Um, these plans are going to be available after I make the helmet if you want to go purchase them and make one for yourselves. And yeah, let's get started. So, as I said in my Shrek helmet video last yeah, last Halloween, me and my friend decided to be Mandalorians, and so I made my Mandalorian helmet and armor out of foam board from the dollar store, like I make all my foam board planes out of. Um, here's a picture of that costume, if you can see the Shrek video. Um, and then, a little while later, I got, I was looking around on YouTube for stuff about making helmets, because I got interested in it. And I found a channel named RJR Productions. And he makes a lot of cool Star Wars helmets out of cardboard. And I was like, hey, maybe I should try that. And so I decided to try the freehand making a Captain Rex style helmet. And here it is. It is not even close to being accurate to either the movies or the Clone Wars TV show. But hey, for a first one, it's not awful. And I mean, it's recognizable as a Captain Rex helmet. So after that, I want to make one that was more accurate. So I tried drawing my, making my own plans off of just pictures, not like 3D model, not 3D modeling or anything. And I think it turned out worse than the Captain Rex helmet. So that gets to go out the window. So after that, I 3D modeled the whole helmet from another 3D model. And then I made plans off of that and did a version one. And I mean, it looks a little better, but it's still kind of awful. So I went back and redid some stuff, and that's what we're going to be making today. So let's do that. Okay, to start off this helmet, I just 3D modeled the whole thing off of another 3D model that I found online. Uh, I just did this to get the right shape on all the parts that are hard to do freehanding and just to get the perfect overall shape. I feel like it turned out pretty good and I made plans off of this. Okay, here I am putting together the first pieces of the helmet. It's just the first front plate and the piece that's gonna go all, all the way around your head. Um, then after that, I cut out the support pieces. One's just a ellipse slash oval the other two half ovals that fit together and then you just glue them on and this is so that in the, this clip you can take these strips of cardboard that are three inches wide and have like three quarter inch deep cuts every three quarter inches on both sides going up the helmet or up the strip and then you cut that and glue it on in a curve and this is pretty much exactly what RJR Productions does in all of his videos so I'm pretty much just copying all that uh, and then after that, these simple pieces, you do the corner pieces. And after that, there should be three more of those. And then when you're done with those, you fill in those tiny little gaps with other pieces of cardboard. I forgot to say when you're done with the main, like, T piece of the dome and the corner pieces, you can go ahead and remove the support pieces that are on the inside just so that they're not in the way in the next step where you need to hold up a piece of cardboard and trace out the shape that you need to fill in. So feel free to take out the support pieces after this. Okay, so now that the dome is completely filled in, you're gonna to need to cut out the cheek pieces and then take the two outline of, outlines of the cheek that you're going to need to cut out and bend them and then glue them into the sides of the cheeks. It's pretty simple, you should be able to figure it out, but you glue them at an inward angle and then you cut out a piece in the, for the middle. I just like to use the piece that I cut out to put the cheek in Then you hold it up to the back, trace it out, cut it out, and then glue it into the back of the cheek. Okay, now for the vent pieces. So for the vent pieces, you're just gonna take the little strips of cardboard that are connected, and you're just gonna start with the back one, 
bend it up in so that it can t connect the other end of that strip and then you glue that in together and then you go into the next one and do the same thing and then glue those together and repeat that on the along the entire line of strips and then repeat that with the piece that's on the other side and glue them together at the back and make sure that they're both symmetrical and then you'll end up with two perfect cheeks. There will also be registration marks on where to glue them together at the back. This is definitely the hardest part of the cardboard portion of this helmet build. So just keep going with it and if you mess up, it's okay. You can restart or you can just deal with it and it'll still probably look just fine. So don't get discouraged if it doesn't look perfect. Okay, I didn't show it in the video, but I cut out a piece to glue in between the vents because it, they were being, they had a quite a big gap in between them. It was about an inch wide and I just connected it at the thickest part of the vents. So then when I glue it to the helmet, the main helmet piece, it won't glue in in a weird way and it'll be way easier in the long run. So just cut out a piece that's about an inch to an inch and a half thick and then put it in between the vent pieces, glue it on, and then you should have no problem gluing the main helmet piece to the vents. Okay, so now it's time to glue the almost like chin piece onto the helmet. And all you do is cut it out, bend it, and then glue it to the corners of the mouth and glue it to the vents, and then you're pretty much set. Now for the fin that goes on top, you just cut out the two pieces that are on the outside and then you just cut out the strip that is about half an inch wide and pretty long and then you just bend it, fit it to it, make sure there's a little lip on the top edge so that it's indented just a little bit. And then you bend it and glue it on and then you glue, do the same at the back and then it's done. You can also choose from the ARC Trooper type of fin that I like and have on my helmet. Or you can just go with the normal Phase 2 fin which will also be included in the plans if you buy them. Now it's time to add on the back plate of the Clone Trooper helmet. You just cut out the back plate piece and then you line it up with the bottom edge of the uh, dome and then you just glue it down it should not lay flat with the rest of the back piece it should just kind of go on top of the vent a little bit and have an angle and then you take an extra piece of cardboard and trace out that side and then glue it in there so it's filled in and then after that it's just the detail pieces you cut out little triangles to put in the back as an outline for a rectangle right in the center of the back and then there's also the ears that I cut. I chose to cut them out of EVA foam because it's just so much easier than cutting it out of cardboard and you don't have to fill it in with spackle or cover it with paper. It's just way easier. And so I cut out little circles and then I use my rotary tool to give them a bevel on each side. And then I just kind of glued it onto the sides and on the back and then on the right ear I cut out a little circle to fit a one inch piece of PVC pipe and that is going to be for the range finder which I'll show you how I made later. Since all the details are done now it's time for to resin the whole thing. But before we do that, you're going to need to cut out the visor. All you have to do for that is um, 
follow the line that you should have either traced or lightly cut in the beginning and then just be really careful to get all the curves nice and cut so that you don't ruin the out the rest of the helmet like the just around the cheeks and stuff um but if you do accidentally cut into there it's going to be okay we can fill it in with spackle later and it'll probably look just fine so just take your time on this part because you don't want to mess it up now it's time to start the finishing processes with this helmet i chose to resin the whole thing to make it hard and just to give it a little bit of weight because i wanted this helmet to feel kind of more real than some of my other stuff um so i just took some two-part resin that i got from hobby bobby mixed it together it's a 50 50 mix and then just spread it over the entire thing on the outside twice and on the inside one really thick layer because I mixed up too much resin. But yeah. Because of the way that I designed this, there is a really small hole near in the vents. So you have to cut out the back so you can actually get your head in but once you're in it's a really tight fit to your head so what i use to get it off is my rotary tool with the cutting bit for a little bit of it on the harder places and then on some of the easier places i just use my exacto knife Okay, now you need to sand the surface of the resin so that the spackle will actually stick to the resin. Because right now it's super smooth and I think spackle doesn't like to stick to things that are smooth. So I just used a mouse sander and went over the entire thing with it just a little bit, enough that it's pretty rough. So yeah. Now it's time for the first layer of spackle. The way I do this is I just take spackle and then I get, in this clip I'm using gloves but I've found that it actually works better if you don't use gloves, you're just gonna have to wash your hands after. But you just get a little glob of spackle on your finger. I like to dip it in water because it makes it easier to manipulate and move around. And then I just put that smear it all over the helmet it doesn't have to look super smooth because we're going to sand it anyway but for this coat you're just going to want to get a really thick coating of spackle after you've waited 24 hours for the spackle to dry you're just going to take the mouse sander or hand sanding sandpaper and then just go over the entire thing until it's nice and smooth and then what i like to do is go over the coat of plastic dip just to show where everything needs more spackle and more sanding to make it smooth and after that you're going to go to a another round of spackle in those specific places that need more and then repeat this quite a few times i think i did it three or four times over pretty much the entire helmet This time I used filler primer because I thought I might be done, but I wasn't, so... When I sprayed Plasti Dip over the filler primer layer, for some reason it ended up curing with a ton of little, like, pricks in it, almost. But then it, like, had a whole bunch of imper imperfections, so I had to go over the entire thing again which would be annoying, but it was worth it in the end, so if you need to do that, go ahead. So I forgot to take a picture of it before I started putting masking tape on it, so here it is, it's pretty dang smooth, and now it's time to paint the whole thing. You can do pretty much whatever you want. I designed my own, like, paint job for it, 
So I just ended up masking off all the places that I wanted to have red and making sure that everywhere I wanted to stay black was going to stay black. And then I just spray painted some red over the entire thing and then took off the masking tape. And then after that, I put some more masking tape on one side, traced out claw marks because I wanted claw marks on it because I thought it looked cool. And then I cut that out of the masking tape and then sprayed some glossy gray over it and then did that on the back plate too because I wanted it. And then because I wanted it to look worn, I put some chip marks in all the paint. And then after I put the black layer on, I decided to put a bunch of little like gloss gray in where there is just black and over the black chip marks to make it look deeper and look like it's going to the base layer paint. Now it's time to make it look really dirty. So what I did is mixed up a bunch of like a dirt colored light brown paint and then I watered it down with water and then just kind of blotched it all over the helmet and then wiped most of it off and then just left it in some of the places where it didn't fully wipe off. So then it looks like the dirt is getting in the places that are deep and hard to get to and the whole rest of the helmet has kind of like a dirt covered look and I like that. So now you can see how dirty it looks after going over the entire thing with the dirt looking water and then rubbing it off. And I like how this paint job looks entirely. So now I'm ready to seal it all in with some gloss clear coat. So I just went over that entire thing with gloss clear coat. A matte gloss clear coat I guess I, I should say and it looks pretty good. Okay so now I'm going to cut out the vi- well actually I already did but this is how you cut out the visor. So you just take the piece that you cut out before you when you cut it out of there, the same piece. You just take that and get one of these replacement welding masks, I think they are. Face shields or whatever. They're tinted green, but they look black, so it's fine. Um, and then you just kind of put it on and trace just a little bit around the entire thing so that there's a place for it to glue onto. And then you just cut that out. It should have some protective plastic over it and then you can glue it right in if you want to but with mine I wanted to make mine look silvery which I've already done some tests with these are both made from the same plastic except one has graphite powder rubbed onto it and they are obviously see-through and one is just a little bit darker which is this one, maybe a slightly blurrier, but it looks chrome on the outside, which I like. So I'm gonna do that to this and then glue it in. So now that I've got the visor in and it looks pretty good, I am going to take these little vent pieces that I found online and 3D printed that then painted silver, and I'm going to glue them in to the vents, both sides. So. I'm gonna do that now. Also, I 3D printed this little piece too and I just found it online as well and then stuffed it in there. So yeah. Okay, I got those pieces in and they look pretty good. And one of the teeth fell out while I was putting the visor in and painting and stuff. So I'm gonna glue that back in in a second. But now the only thing left to do is to attach the back piece, which is not right here right now, but I'm going to do that by using elastic bands and connecting them there and on the top of the back piece and then putting magnets in there and there of the other piece and then it'll just stick together and fold out when I need it to because I cannot fit my head through a tiny hole like that. So I'm going to do that. Okay, so I've done everything I needed to on the helmet. The visor's in, the tooth, glued, the tooth is glued in, all the detail pieces are in there, and the seam is kind of obvious, but it's not that bad. Um, when you open up the helmet, it's magnetically held in, 
by neodymium magnets on one side and just normal like magnets that you get. Uh, I have magnets on this side that are normal too because I couldn't find neodymium magnets and then after I put them in I found them. So I just kind of glued them in and that worked. Holds pretty shut pretty well and yeah this entire piece is held on by an elastic band like I said before and it allows you to get your head in there and then reattach it. So yeah, there's the helmet. The only thing I need left is the rangefinder, which is 3D printing right now and then I'll put it on with the sun and you'll see it. Okay, so I've already glued in the rangefinder, but I'll show you how I made it. Okay, so it's at the bottom, it's just a piece of a pipe fitting for a three quarter inch PVC pipe. And in here, I just made a hole in the helmet that fits a piece of three quarter inch PVC pipe and had it stick out a little bit. And then I super glued that into the side of the helmet. And so since this is a three quarter inch PVC pipe fitting, this just slides on and holds itself on and it allows it to rotate. And then the rest of the rangefinder doesn't look amazing because my 3D printer started being a little weird. But I just found a rangefinder file on Thingiverse and printed it out. And then just glued it onto the piece of pipe. So I'll just attach it for you here in a second and you'll see how it works. Okay, so the rangefinder is attached. And since it's just PVC pipe, it can, it's a little stiff, but I kind of like it like that. But it allows it to rotate down into the usable position. And then it also can rotate back up freely. And it won't just fall off if you're moving around. So that's the finished helmet. And so we'll go into the outro here. Okay, so here's the finished helmet. Uh, I feel like it turned out pretty good. I like the paint job. I like the overall shape of it. I like the range finder and how it works. Um, I Overall, I feel like it worked out pretty good. Um, it's way better than my first attempt, which is right here. But it's way better by kind of a lot. So, yeah. Um, I'll put it on for you. I kind of messed up a little bit making it. It's too tall this way and too skinny this way. So that'll be fixed in the plans if you make them. So just, if you do buy the plans, it's gonna turn out looking just a little bit more accurate. So I'll put it on for you. Yeah, there it is on me. Hope you can see it all. Um, thanks for watching if you like the video, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.